Hey everyone, Mr. Toffee of Kakuchiwa Pre here. The first half of 2021 is done and over with. So, I thought we'd ask each and every one of our gaming editorial and content creating pals from Malaysia, Singapore, and all over Southeast Asia about what their favorite games and moments of 2021 are so far. Think of this more like a sanity check of sorts for 2021. Here with me is good old Hanif from BFM Radio. How are you doing, Hanif? Hey, hey, John. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I'm doing okay, I guess, coping. <laughs> Uh, yeah, just tell me a bit more about BFM for people who are listening to this outside of Malaysia. Like, just talk a little bit about your segment and go on. Okay, so BFM uh, Radio is basically a top radio station that's based in Klang Valley. We've, um, like the name suggests, it's Business FM. So uh, we focus mostly on business, but we do have other uh, slots uh, on the station that focuses on a lot of other things, uh, including, I guess, gaming. Uh, so the show that... Um, John's talking about is GGWP. It's called. Um, um, it's a gaming show that focuses on, I guess, games and conversations around games. I suppose. Yeah, it's a bit of everything. Uh, we try to cover, um, yeah, a bit of everything. I suppose within the gaming sector, from esports to, um, you know, reviews and news. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. So since you've played a lot of games for the past six months, from January all the way to June, maybe you could just share with us what your top picks are so far for 2021. <laughs> I wouldn't say I played that. I played that many games, to be fair. But um, okay, so this is gonna be. Um, assuming, uh, assuming that we're gonna be talking about new games, right? But uh, it'd be cool to talk about newer games, which I'm gonna touch on a bit as well. But I think for now, I'm gonna focus on the game that I'm still currently playing, uh, or rather, uh, tr the trilogy that I'm still gonna, uh, still gonna, uh, I'm still playing. Um, this is um, Mass Effect Legendary Edition, only because this is my first time playing Mass Effect. Uh, yes, I know it's, that's a bit embarrassing, but. Um, so far, the game has been like really engrossing for me. I've been, um, I guess, pulled in by by the franchise and by the characters, by the I guess storyline, um, which is kind of like interesting. I know it's technically a bit like it's technically an old game, but um, because it's my first time, I've been thoroughly like um, yeah pulled in by the by the franchise, and I've been like, I think I'm about to maybe complete the second game. So. So far, that's the highlight for me. Um, finally getting to play Mass Effect. Um, other than that, um, Resident Evil Village is also kind of fun, actually, to be honest. Um, actually, if you don't yeah. mind, could we just go back to Mass Effect Legendary? Like, what was it okay. you like about the writing of the game and how the scope is? Like, did you enjoy like the twists and turns, or like were there any moments that really surprised you or caught you off guard? Because I'm actually kind of jealous that you're playing this for the first time because <laughs> that that. That's a really good feeling in that moment when you're actually playing something brand new for the first time, especially something as revered as the Mass Effect trilogy. So take it away. Yeah, uh, I've heard that a lot from a lot of people saying that, yeah, they're jealous that this is my first time playing it. Uh, I think what pulled me in was most likely the storyline and also the, the the world itself. Like Because I think the thing about playing RPG games is that sometimes... Uh, it takes a while for you to sort of like be invested uh, or to be to, uh, it takes you quite a while to 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 be pulled in into the whole story like so you so you have to i guess buy into the whole um world building uh, uh, aspect of of of, of uh, the rpg and i think for me it's most um it started out a bit slow to be honest because as always you know when it comes to you know just not just mass effect but any other rpgs uh, the world building aspect can be quite uh, overwhelming sometimes, but I think um, as I learn uh, slowly about all the characters, you know, all the races and all the you know, how the galaxy works, uh, it feels like you know it's it's like it's unlike any sci-fi sci-fi genre other sci-fi genres that I've you know consumed whether via games or like you know via books or graphic novels or, or movies even um, it's relatable and because. Um, I guess the story is told from the perspective of Commander Shepard. Uh, it makes the story that's that heroic element, but at the same time, um, be, uh, be, it, it, it makes you feel you know it makes you wonder about you know, especially you know in this moment it makes you wonder about you know what's out there, uh, and I, I like that aspect because because you know you feel sometimes you feel a bit small that knowing that you know there there are a lot of other races uh, outside outside your own comfort zone right so so i guess that's that's the aspect as, as much as i think when i first when i first played the first game it was slightly you can tell that the, the game is pretty old um once you move on to the second game it, it felt like a bit more modern slightly and i think the way uh, a lot of like i think quality of life improvements that was present in the second game made the whole experience much much better and i think um 
so far um you know i can't i can't say much because i haven't completed the trilogy yet but i think uh two games in it feels like i'm i you know i just can't can't help but feel really immersed in the in the world that, that that's for me is like just the the most awesome thing about learning like for me it's about learning all the the races and all the other races uh all the characters you know and how they they are pretty crucial in the development of 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 you know the galaxy the politics surrounding surrounding different races you know the genophage and all all those little things lah it just yeah it was it's just like you know engrossing i can't stop you know a game is good when you can't stop thinking about the game after you've played them right you know once you you know when go go to bed before you stop going to bed before you go to bed you feel like okay maybe i need to uh, perhaps you know just watch another youtube video involving the game yeah so nice nice it's also nice that the game itself has a very massive codex I think this version ah, they yeah. actually have it voice was it uh could you just uh clarify for me Okay this is going to be this is going to this is a bit weird because I haven't actually read the codex but oh, I I've only okay. read one or two a whole lot of things to read out then <laughs> yeah if you want to <laughs> Yeah um I'm planning to actually do that but uh, I was told by some friends of mine that um I can maybe just do that via you know Mass Effect wiki or something but I so far I haven't touched that yet because like I said you know the thing about RPGs is that it can be really overwhelming and the last thing I want to do at least when it comes to playing video games is to spend time reading a lot of things you know uh, I don't think I'm if I'm not mistaken I've clicked on one or two but in the in the first Mass Effect game I don't think it was voice uh, I'm not sure about the second one Okay I got to ask these two questions for all Mass Effect newbies and you know virgins and what not like among all the yeah. races which one's your favorite Oh, um. To you be gotta honest, pick one. you gotta pick one. Okay, one. Ah, huh? yes, just one. I have to go with the Salarian. Okay. <laughs> Only because I feel they're very quirky, and especially well, Mordin aside, which Mordin is his own, his own character, but you know, even other Salarian characters that you, uh, you bump into, they're all very. There's a certain like quirkiness, but at the same time, pretty like they're pretty measured, but at the same time, they can be. Very quirky, if that makes sense. Yeah, but Mordin is just on a whole different level. Mordin is so far is my favorite character. Like, yeah, like yeah. I can't help but, you know, uh, uh, his I don't know, like his abilities, is pretty decent, and I can't help but always want to talk to him. Yeah, so Mordin is the f- yeah, um, Salarian is probably my favorite race there. Okay, and the second last and the second and last question, did you enjoy driving the Beko? Hmm. <laughs> uh, because this is my first time i don't think it was as bad uh, i've been told that it was pretty horrible uh, the experience was pretty horrible for a lot of gamers who played the original trilogy or rather the first game the the, the non non legendary edition um it was pretty okay i suppose um i'm i'm not a fan of the you know the second one i think um the floating um, i forgot <laughs> hammerhead yeah so so that that one is uh, present in the second game right yeah mako was pretty okay i think it was it wasn't that terrible maybe because they fixed it and I, I you know this is my first time playing it so i'm playing the fixed version so it wasn't as bad to be honest well that is true because you actually have all the trilogy with you on your side so if you if that bit left the sour taste in your mouth you can just go to the next game for those who actually <laughs> had to play it back then they hated the mode and then they had to wait a while until the sequel came out and then they they said ah oh, you know what we'll just give you this planet scanning mini game that seemed that you kind of fun <laughs> the more i bring it up more and more so yeah it's uh, fun but it's kind of tedious as well a bit like but i i enjoy doing it but it's a bit tedious sometimes the planet scanning thing uh, true that true that but anyway i'm glad you had fun i mean i hope that you get a really good experience playing the entire trilogy which i de- think you can definitely finish it before 2021 ends Yeah, definitely, definitely. I, I mean, right now, I think because we don't have that many games that are coming out right now, I'm still gonna probably most likely focus on this particular trilogy first, and then yeah, we'll see. Now, on the off chance yeah, that you forward. managed to finish the third game like before 2021 hit, are there any games in the next six months that you are actually looking forward to playing? Like anything that's upcoming, especially since we saw the E3 stuff being announced back and forth. Okay. Um, the biggest one is most likely Horizon Forbidden West, but I'm a bit unsure whether they're actually gonna meet the deadline for this year, considering that they haven't released as of I think as of now they have not released a release date yet, right? So, um, most likely that's definitely the D game that I'm gonna be looking forward to, to be honest. Uh, but you know, and hopefully, again, I don't want to rush them, but hopefully, if it's released this year, that's probably gonna be the game lah. But you know, if it's if it's not, um. 
funny and this might sound a bit funny but other than that I, I don't have anything else that I'm currently like you know, super excited about um, Far Cry 6 looks interesting but I guess that one is something that um, you know I'm not that as enthusiastic about but I don't mind playing it uh, funny okay because because okay so <laughs> I'm actually looking forward to uh, apart from Horizon Forbidden West uh, Pro Evolution Soccer 2022 only because you know I'm, I'm a huge football fan and I'm a huge fan of that franchise as well I thoroughly uh, enjoyed past 2020 and also to a certain extent 2021 which is just uh i guess a patch update or like a rost- roster update for the game uh, they release it and they release it at a lower price i ended up buying it as well because i was looking for games to just play um i'm looking forward to it only because they said that they're gonna change the engine right so they've been using uh, konami's engine i think fox engine for the longest time so i think they're moving to um unreal engine and i think uh, because it's quote unquote um because they skip technically one one year to to produce this game i'm actually pretty curious um as to how it's gonna pan out lah. but the thing about konami is that they have never they're never good at at doing the menu and stuff like that so um i hopefully hopefully they'll be able to fix that but i'm looking forward to the gameplay most, mostly lah. like oh, see whether like you know. did you hear news that the game might actually end up free to play i mean like um I think oh. they're going to change up the system where basically, yeah, the game is initially free, but microtransactions, it could involve teams or jerseys or whatnot, but I'm not sure. So, any thoughts about that? Like, the game possibly going to free, going free to play? <laughs> mm, I, I, I think it's already free to play on mobile, right? Which is, I guess, that's that's the business model for mobile. I don't think fans will, will be happy with that. I don't think I'll be happy with that, to be honest, because... Yeah, I would rather pay like a one lump sum for for the whole game, and you can. Pr- I mean, because they're already following EA's model, right? Of 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 having their own version of Ultimate Team, which I don't think is as successful. But it is. They are already, you know, making money there. I think there are still players playing on on playing that mode uh, on uh, PES as well. So I wouldn't be happy with that, and I think that's the step in the wrong direction, definitely. Uh, so yeah, I don't think that will work, lah. To be honest, so I, I would rather okay. See, see, the thing about sports games is that people have always said that why would you want to keep on, you know, releasing the game every every year, right? So a more sustainable model would probably be you know release the game you know once every every two years or every three years, right? Um, as if you make a the um, mechanic strong enough perhaps it can last you for at least two years or maybe three years i suppose and you can keep on i guess you know maybe if, if it's not cost efficient to just release a patch update for us to update for every year maybe you can charge a small amount of money to do that i think people would wouldn't mind doing that you know so so i don't think free to play is the the model that they should go but perhaps you know consider like a better model lah. but yeah not definitely not free to play <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. Hey, uh, thanks again for joining me and doing this short video with all the content creators. And that's pretty cool that you get to we get to hear picks for your favorite game for 2021 as well as your future game for 2021. So before we wrap this up, how about you just tell us where we can follow you and listen to you at online? Okay, so... Um GGWP is a show on BFM Radio, so obviously it airs um, uh, on our, our, our airwaves here. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, if you would like to find out, the, uh, if you would like to check out the podcast, you can go to uh, www.bfm.my and you can also find the podcast uh, on Spotify. Uh, you can just look for BFM GGWP. Yes. All right. Awesome, man. This is me, Mr. Toffee, signing out. Thanks again, Hanif. Thank you very much, John.